Hello everyone, my name is Kenton Cavescu. I'm an ex-Googler, an ex-BCG consultant, and the founder of RocketBlocks, an online platform that helps candidates prepare for interviews. In this RocketBlocks mini lesson, I'm really excited because we're sitting down with Bill Farrell, who is a former Google product manager. He did a stint at NASA early in his career. He is a Y Combinator backed founder, and he's currently the CTO and co-founder of a company called Outcome Machines. So Bill really has done it all. And in this conversation about product management, we're gonna talk about the craft of product management. We're gonna talk about the skills that are needed to succeed and walk through some common product scenarios and see how Bill would respond to those. So let's go ahead and jump in. Tell me a little bit about, you know, I think when a lot of people think about product management and the role of product management, especially if they haven't been in that role before, they think about like setting the vision for the product and creating the roadmap. So where would those type of activities fit into your daily schedule? Does it, does it sort of fit into some of the stuff you already described or is that separate? For me, the process of developing a plan is not one of, hey, Bill's going to go off into his corner and think about the perfect product plan and then type it up and deliver it on a, on printed pieces of paper to everyone <laughs> else on tablets. the team and then just, yeah, on, ta on tablets and then uh, not iPads, but stone tablets. Uh, <laughs> and then... Uh, and then I'm going to go on vacation. See you next quarter. I hope you have a great quarter. Um, I think the reality is that as the PM, uh, each of the customers that you're talking to, and I mean both the real end user customers and then the internal customers, they're giving you ideas in some sense, whether they know it or not. Sometimes they'll be explicit. Hey, we should add this feature. This is why this would be such a cool thing. Um, and that could come from engineering, some engineer who's really passionate about what they're doing or who sees an insight because they're deep in the code and they know that there's one tweak that they can make and it might take a week for them to make that tweak, but then that would unlock a certain piece of value for the real end customer. Or it could be someone from support who's saying, hey, we're having this issue over and over and over again. What do you think? I think that if we just change, maybe it's the language on a certain page or changed how a button functions, um, or maybe change the prominence of a button so that it was front and center so that users could really understand, hey, why is my campaign not started? Well, you didn't click the start campaign button. <laughs> well, the start campaign button is hidden over here at the top right and is not big and front and center. Oh, well, that would be another example of kind of feedback um, or ideas for the product. So I think that in all of your normal day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week meetings, you're hearing a ton about the product and what people like and what people hate. and 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 then uh, and then also ideas of hey if we just did this this would be amazing, I think the job is that you're organizing all of that information and then coming up with a perspective plan of hey what which of these things are really going to move the needle for us based on what what is the needle that we care about is the needle revenue is that the only one that we care about is it user user satisfaction um, is it user growth which of these things are uh the most important needle and then how do they rank right um and then based on those higher level objectives that maybe you and your team have talked about or the company has set as a the this is the thing that we need the most out of your team um then that comes down to okay well now i have some ideas and you may have some of your own ideas that you're bringing to the table but really i don't think that uh a good pm is the pm who has the perfect insight for it. We just need to make these few tweaks. I think the, in my opinion, the, I'm not gonna even call it the perfect PM, but the really good PM is the one who's listening to each of the customers and trying to divine, well, what, what are they really saying and what are the real problems? And okay, well, how can I incorporate all of this? And I say that largely because I don't think any one PM is the perfect one who's ever gonna know the right solution. They may get lucky a couple of times, but, uh, the ability to listen and react, I think, is actually a much more powerful tool. Yep. So now, as for the actual day-to-day, -day, like when you get to write up that plan, right, I think that that's probably really dependent on the organization that you're working in, uh, right? Bigger organizations are probably focused on a quarterly cycle of objectives with annual objectives as well, right? So OKRs is what Google used, and I, I really liked that system. Um, but that meant that kind of maybe at the monthly level, you're tracking how you're doing against both your quarterly and annual objectives. 
and then that may you may take a few notes every month and then at the end of a three month cycle you're spending a few days of the week actually saying okay well great well what should our next uh quarter objectives be and based on those objectives what are the projects that we should sign up to deliver so that we can meet those objectives and i mean that process might literally take two to three weeks if you're thinking about total uh total time of the clock just spinning but you're not working on it the whole time right you're coming up with a draft getting buy-in from your own team getting buy-in from other teams that you may need their help from or that they have influence right the sales team may have influence over what you need to build yep. um, and then okay we generally all agree about what we'd like let's take it to our our management team and propose it as hey this is our proposal and they may say great I need a little more specificity here. And here's another objective that you didn't know about, which is we want to launch in EMEA. Oh, okay, great. Well, I didn't know that that was on the table yet. So now that I know it's on the table, of course, that changes the yeah. objectives a little bit. Um, and then you actually, okay, now, now let's lock it in. And now you're in some sense done uh, figuring that out. Or then you go on a communication tour of explaining Hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what I need from you. This is what you can expect from me and what time frame. So that now if I'm doing a good job on quarterly objectives, right? It's all about communication so that my stakeholders know what to expect and then I need to deliver on that. But that by having them know what to expect and hopefully having had them buy into what the plan was beforehand, now I know that they're not going to be on my back saying, Hey, Bill, when are you launching this thing? Well, we already talked about when we're launching <laughs> it. And you already agreed to that. So uh, I think that that gets them to see, oh, okay, Bill's reasonable. We came up with a plan together. I might have wanted it even sooner, but I did agree that some of those other things were more important. And so now I can see, hopefully, Bill uh, leads the team or helps the team deliver on the plan uh, on schedule. Gotcha. So it, would it be a fair summary to to say, you know, going back to sort of like this roadmap or this plan document that you're referring to, that if in your mind, if you're if you're doing it, well, let's use the word correctly. Uh, sure. The the document is really just sort of the final output of this whole daily, weekly process you're having, where you're meeting with all of your customers, engineers, designers, execs, salespeople, et cetera, and gathering and sort of listening to all this information, requirements, and feedback from the market, and then ultimately you sort of sift through that and collaboratively work on it with your team and eventually you just sort of codify it in a roadmap but it's it's less like i sit down once every month or every quarter and sort of in this isolated environment come up with the roadmap that will be the plan yeah i think that that's true especially at any larger organization i think the one of the special things about a pm is that they probably have a lot more insight into the various customers uh, and the various needs. So I think that is why, in some sense, the PM is the one to sit down and write it up. But you're not sit, sitting down and writing up your own ideas. You're sitting down and writing up what you've heard across your customers, in some sense. Yeah. Um, and, and then the, the one tweak I would make, and I think I, I tried to clarify there, is that that's for larger organizations, right? If you're a very small organization, it's probably going to happen more on a monthly basis. Um, and then if you're at an even smaller organization, um, then sure, our PMs may be proposing ideas of, hey, this is the tweak that we should make, or this is the feature that we should build, and here's why. But I think, I think that that here's why is where that insight from talking to customers comes in. Um, so uh, the difference that I might uh, portray between the PM going into a room by him or herself and writing up a perfect plan and saying, here's the perfect plan is that usually if it's that style, they don't have a reason why this is important. Whereas if you're actually listening to your different customers and you're organizing this information and then saying, okay, well, these are the pain points and these are our core objectives around metrics. So here is the plan for each of the items on the plan. You probably have a pretty detailed answer for here's why this is what we should do. And this is the core problem that it's solving. And this is the objective that it's tied to for what we're doing. Great. I hope you enjoyed this snippet of my conversation with Bill Farrell. We've got a ton of great content coming out on both the consulting 
and the product management career path on a weekly basis. So if you haven't subscribed yet already, there is a big button on screen right now. Go ahead and click that, and that means you'll get everything that we put out as soon as it arrives. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.